So our next speaker has flown in all the way from Bhutan. Dorji Wangchuk has served as the director of Bhutan's Royal Office of Media and the spokesperson to the King of Bhutan. Today, he's gonna to talk about a new project he's working on. He teamed up with researchers from Berkeley and Yale on a global project to study and discover the science of contentment. And pretty soon here, Bhutan is gonna have a contentment lab. Pretty cool, eh? Dorji, I'd like you to come up here and please help our audience become the most content people in the country. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you, uh, Anand, and um, thank you, uh, Dr. Larry Thompson, for having me here. It has uh, basically um, fulfilled one of my childhood fantasies, and that is if you drill a hole from uh, Florida <laughs> right across the diameter of the uh, globe, uh, you would land in Bhutan, and, and that's what I actually uh, was wondering all throughout my childhood. <laughs> where I would land if I drill a hole through Bhutan. <laughs> I'll be talking about uh, contentment, very simple subject, yet very, I think, would, would be one of the most difficult. The whole discussion about happiness and contentment began with uh, a statement met, made by the king of Bhutan in 1979, when he told a journalist that for Bhutan gross national happiness, is more important than gross national product. And then on, it was a very quiet development philosophy that he pursued. He ruled for 34 years, uh, abdicated his throne at the age of 51 in 2006, uh, gave Bhutan the, the first democratic government in 2008, a constitution uh, followed a few months later, and he's still um, alive. Um, looking younger than ever. He's turning 60 uh, this year, and he's cycling all the time, doing nothing. Basically, he put his son in the hot job. In uh, uh, 1998, that's when the world caught on this, uh, this philo philosophy of gross national happiness. And uh, back in Bhutan, we have something called the GN screening tool, through which every plans and projects major plans and projects have to be passed if they have to be approved. A resolution was also passed by the UN in April of 2001, uh, to, uh, 2011, uh, which puts happiness and well-being as a part of the measurement of a country's, uh, country's progress. Now, uh, the whole discussion of happiness is getting a little uh, tiring, it's little getting a uh, getting little stagnated, so we are thinking of ways uh, to how to move forward. And as Alex uh, said um, this morning, we made a step, step backwards, or at least me and my, uh, we made a step backwards, and uh, we looked at the, the original concept of gross national happiness, and it was not happiness as such per se, because that's very difficult, it was contentment, which was more profound. Even historically, but the Bhutan as a nation and Bhutanese as individuals never really actually uh, pursued happiness as such. It was more to do with contentment. And a state document of 1734 states that the government should ensure that citizens are comfortable and content, not uh, happy or peaceful, uh, which, which we uh, have got now. The problem with happiness is that the more we pursue it, the more it eludes us. This is the reality. And uh, rather, if we try to find reasons and meanings to be happy, that's a better bet. And being content is one of uh, the ways to get there. It's a very subjective uh, um, subject uh, when it comes to happiness. But contentment is deeper, and it also sustains uh, for a longer period. This is from my own experience. Uh, and unlike happiness, which is very difficult to achieve as a nation, let alone uh, you know, as a as, 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 as group of uh, individuals and communities, 
a contentment perhaps can be is more achievable as compared to happiness. So that's how our interest on happiness, uh, on contentment grew over the last few uh, months. Few more things. In Buddhism, um, the Dalai Lama once said that Buddhism is the science of happiness. And uh, basically what uh, uh, we are talking about is that Buddhism is actually all boils down to training your consciousness, which is known as sem in, 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 in Tibetan, in Dzongkha, in, in the languages of that region. But more than uh, religion, which tends to uh, be a little tricky, uh, especially after all the 9-11 thing that happened, uh, we look at languages and cultures as a more uh, universal, acceptable um, uh, proposition. And we looked at languages, and we find that uh, the word for uh, Buddhism in Dzongkha, in, in, in Bhutanese, is Nangpagiche, which means religion of the inner self. So we seek happiness, we seek contentment, we seek um, more understanding of our consciousness uh, if we really try to go for uh, what we call the pursuit of happiness. Playing around more with some words, uh, life, for example, is known as jigten, which is, a, uh, which is um, a combination of two words, jig and ten, and that means collapsible support. So basically, if you are thinking life is strong, just let you know that it is collapsible. It can collapse any, any time. So this is the power of the language that we are looking at. So we, um, how do we go uh, uh, into, let's say, uh, training or, or, or bringing up our children? We put a lot of emphasis on two concepts, or one concept called chokshe, which is also uh, known as tamse, means uh, knowing your limit. So loosely, uh, my friends in, uh, uh, in Yale has translated this as practical contentment. So basically, if you know your tamse, or if you train yourself to know your tamse, perhaps you could achieve contentment. So uh, we're doing, we are trying to bring in um, uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, people from around the world, trying to see how contentment is uh, addressed in different cultures. So perhaps we thought we could come up with something called a science of contentment. And uh, the, the beauty of science, with all its flaws, is that it can be replicated. It's universal. Whereas a philosophy is very, very specific to an individual, to a community, or a country. So that's why we are interested in collaborating with uh, Western universities. I stumbled upon containment under a very not, not so very happy um, circumstances. And the reason uh, why I'm, I am going to tell you this story is because I'm a journalist, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a storyteller. I'm not a philosopher, I'm not an academician, nor a social scientist. So I don't know how really to get on uh, uh, to convince you about uh, contentment, uh, I mean, this thing about contentment. Well, uh, actually, my life uh, is actually a very, um, is a success story. I, I grew up uh, barefoot, so I was very happy to have our barefoot college this morning. I went hungry um, throughout um, perhaps uh, much of my childhood. Uh, but as soon as I got into a modern school, uh, something miraculously happened. I was doing pretty well, uh, went on to complete my high school, um, got a Wiener scholarship to Italy to study engineering in Bologna. Had a lot of uh, nice spaghetti there for eight years. I returned to my country in 1995, and together with my, my, uh, my dream, I, uh, I fulfilled um, the, my dream of bringing radio and television for the first time into Bhutan between 1997 and 1999. That made me a star performer. Uh, and that, uh, and they made a mistake of, uh, of appointing, appointing me, uh, promoting me to the post of chief engineer. And that was a mistake because a chief engineer is nothing but uh, a glorified administrator. And I never wanted to be a glorified administrator. So I, I resigned from the post of chief engineer. I said I will make films and I will host some shows, do some scientific programs. That's what uh, I did. I did pretty well. Um, so that's me uh, running barefoot uh, in school 
and then this one in 2003 when I was on the top of the world winning a couple of uh, uh, documentary awards. Uh, my, journey, my journey went further. I left a very good and a stable career to become uh, a freelance uh, filmmaker. I realized that working for the government, you have certain ceilings that you hit. And I, I, I felt my ceiling was uh, hit already. So I left a very stable and a government uh, job uh, for which my father never uh, didn't speak to me for a year uh, because I was, I was almost becoming the CEO of the, the, the broadcast company that I was working for. Anyway, uh, I was called back uh, again uh, by the government, not the, by the government, by the king to be his press secretary, to be the spokesperson, uh, as soon as he was crowned in 2008. That made me another um, celebrity of, of some kind. Um, I accompanied the king everywhere like a shadow in the, in this, is the, uh, this is a picture from the Japanese parliament where the king addressed in 2011. I dined with uh, state leaders, um, state dinners, um, shook hands with, uh, with uh, great leaders of the world, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, a person that I admire uh, truly. Then came the bombshell. Um, I thought I was done with my life. I mean, I thought I had reached my, the pinnacle of my life. Until one day, fate said, well, we're not done with you yet. And came, came a shocking news that on um, November 22nd, 2012, I was with the king uh, touring a remote part of Bhutan when I got a call. And uh, my friend, it was uh, on the other hand, on the other side of uh, the line was my friend who said that I have to rush back because my, uh, something has happened to my wife. And my wife was found in a pool of blood in front of my house. And uh, nobody knew what happened. Uh, uh, we just found, uh, later we found that uh, she was uh, uh, dashed by two drunkards and she fell backwards uh, and hit her head on the, on the drain, sending her into coma, into a multiple fracture. So uh, anyway, I didn't know whether my wife was alive when I was driving back. You know, it was a long 10 hours drive in the night. And uh, it didn't make sense uh, to me what was happening because I've never been uh, a bad guy. I never had enemies. And, uh, and so um, as I was driving towards, uh, uh, towards my home uh, in, the, in the capital, I made a deal with myself that if I got back my wife, I got back my life. Uh, I would work towards making this world a better place so that nobody goes through this again, not, uh, not, 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 not my countrymen. Anyway, my wife survived, and uh, I, I left the palace and the perks and the privileges, uh, the ivory tower from where I was operating, and then I moved on, and I looked for a place where I could start my journey all over again. And I found that I could start from a college, the college that produces half of Bhutan's leader. And that happened to be on the other side of the country. And so I drove, I packed a few things that I ne needed, and uh, I became a teacher from being the most powerful spokesperson in the country to uh, a simple teacher. And then something happened. I got my some smile back. And I was, uh, I was happy. And uh, I mean, I was happy all over, all over again. And not only that, something deeper happened. I was not laughing, but there was something very deep, unexplainable feelings that I was getting when I was there with the students. When I walked into the classroom, uh, it's a rundown classroom, by the way, uh, but, 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 but I, was not, I was not sad. I was not, I was not embarrassed. I was not feeling down. And that's when I realized that if your sim, your consciousness, if your consciousness at, is at peace, you will find contentment everywhere. So from that day on, from the time of the accident that happened to my wife, I cherish every moment that I leave. I cherish every people that I meet. I'm happy here in Sarasota as much as I'm happy there in my uh, one-room apartment uh, and a rundown college. 
I'm happy even uh, when, when I'm uh, standing in line in Delhi airport in the heat. It's because my consciousness is at peace. And I guess that's, um, that's the, well, the skill or, 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 the, or, the, or the trick that you could. So rather than seeking happiness all the time, trying to be happy, I must be happy or I should be happy, I think rather than seeking um, happiness, one got to find reasons to be happy, meanings to be happy, then happiness perhaps can be assured. So I teach, as, uh, as, 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 some, uh, as someone said, I was very happy to hear uh, Larry Thompson sp uh, uh, talk about creativity, doing new ways of uh, things. Uh, so I take out my students. I don't keep them in the classroom much. We go out. And one of the things that I start every year with every new batch of students is I make them write an essay. Who am I? Why am I here? And I make them write over and over again, over and over again, till I, I, I see that they have really understood why they are asking that, that question. And I have never taught before. I, I don't know uh, all, the, all, all the teaching te uh, technologies and techniques and methodologies. Uh, and people started questioning my, my style until, until uh, last semester when two of my students, I was teaching them radio, radio documentaries. Two of them went on to be selected, nominated for Asia Pacific Broadcasting Award in Macau for a two documentaries they made because they made it with their heart. They made it with, their, with, with, with conviction. So uh, we do a lot of things there. I teach photography. I, 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 uh, oh, I guide uh, them to photography. I don't teach. Um, I, we, we built a radio station where people just shout out every, every evening. Uh, let, let them do whatever they want. I tell them anything happens, I'll go, I'm going to defend you. So say whatever you want on, on the radio. <laughs> and, uh, when, uh, and one day, I got a call from my uh, a colleague. I was returning again from, from the capital when I was, supposed to, I was asked to pick two uh, Americans, two American professors who were planning to do some research on on human emotions. And they were trying to find whether human emotions can be something as universal. Whether it's, it, it, or is it just country specific, culture specific, or is it universal? I said, and when we uh, started discussing this, when they told me, I said, of course it's universal. Because we are all human beings. We all have that consciousness. We all have that same. And that's where the happiness and emotions all come from. And, uh, and he said, so, it's, so my experiment is going to be all right. He said, your experiment is going to be all right. And you're going to get your PhD from wherever univer whichever university. You know? And he said, can you help me? I said, what's in there for? You know? And he said, well, I can get you a, a round trip to the US. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, actually, that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm saying is, what is there for the humanity? Because the problem is with, with these big universities is that they have all the solutions for the world's problem. The only problem is that they speak among themselves. All the things, all the solutions are locked up in the ivory tower of Yale and Berkeley and all the great universities. I said, if you are going to release the, those information, if you're going to really do a, 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 a participatory kind of research where we bring out this uh, to the world, then I'm in. And uh, he made a call to his professor who was, uh, uh, who was supervising the uh, research, that professor perhaps said yes, and he said yes, and I said yes. <laughs> so, and we made several journeys uh, to these remote communities. And what we are doing is we are doing a longitudinal study of how a community when it, when, uh, it's, that is coming into contact for the first time with road, electricity, mobile phones, uh, television is, um, uh, is degrading in terms of happiness and contentment. So if we have this um, progression, or, or, or let's say um, degra uh, de uh, degradation of, of contentment, that, that emotions, then perhaps as, as a former engineer, I believe we can re-engineer, we reverse engineer the process to a certain extent. So this is a very ambitious uh, project that we have, we have set in 
this is what brings me to the US, uh, or what brought me to the US for the first time. And uh, so uh, this, will be, uh, this project will be kicked off sometime next year. We're still trying to understand, trying to set, ask the right questions. We're trying to do the questionnaires and all sorts of things. So that ends my, um, that ends my presentation. I hope you will all find your sem, your consciousness. I hope you will have a contented and happy life. And how we uh, get on to that, I think um, uh, Alex answered this morning. We only need to step one uh, step backwards so that you can go two steps forwards. And you will achieve your contentment if you do that. Let me assure you. Thank you very much.